She's his girlfriend. He calls you despicable names. The mother of his child. Did you spit on her? I have, yes. With another on the way. He was trying to get me home by dragging me. This is more than jealous love. Matt thinks I'm sleeping with half the town. Is it dangerous love? That's one of my fears is that she has someone around my son. The one I'm concerned being around the children is you. You know the show we were talking about last night? Yes. Um, I got some of the text messages. What are they? Well, I, I can't. I, I can't. Well, I can't even. Tell me. I can't even show these. Tell me. Can you tell me? No, well. They're that bad. Well, I can. No. <sighs> well, no, you can't show those. No, no, can't. He texts that to his girlfriend. Are you kidding me? Mm. That's terrible. That's abuse. That is abusive. Do, do you think she knows that? Do you think she knows that's abusive? Mm. Well, I guarantee you she doesn't. Uh, does she answer him when he sends those to her? Yeah. <gasps> that's horrible. Mm. Oh my God. Well, let's get started. I'll meet you out there. Okay. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Bill. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Your first love is supposed to be something that you remember fondly, something memories are made from, right? Well, sadly, my guest Eileen's memories are made up of this, and this, and this. I hope you never get over this and feel the way I do when I'm reminded every day that my kid's mom is a whore. Don't have our son around anyone you nasty slut. Well, Robin heard even worse before the show. In fact, Eileen says her boyfriend Matt is so convinced she's cheating that he calls the mother of his child the most degrading names in the book. My boyfriend Matt and I have been dating for almost two years. In the beginning, he was every girl's dream guy. It felt like something out of a movie. About five months into our relationship, Matt started accusing me of cheating on him. I did not see it coming at all. Now, our relationship is horrible. There's no trust in it at all. Matt thinks I'm sleeping with my ex-boyfriend, his friend, and half the town. I think that Matt is crazy and delusional. He has absolutely no proof that I have cheated on him. Matt has called me a slut, a whore, a pig, whenever Matt says something. I'm just so used to it. <sighs> During my first pregnancy, we got in a really bad argument and he made me sleep on the floor. The first time he spit in my face, I kind of just stood there. He did it and he didn't even flinch. He would make fun of my body after I had his child. He just said that I'm beat up down there. He would say stuff about my stretch marks. I act like it doesn't bother me. Whenever I show him emotion, he thinks it's fake. The most hurtful thing that Matt does is he turns to my son and he will say, I know your mommy's a whore. He'll say that he's sorry for choosing someone like me to be his mother. Okay, are you cheating on your boyfriend? No, you, I have you, not cheated on him. Okay, and so he's fabricating this in his mind. He's just making this up. Yes. Okay, and it started because why? Is there anything you can look at that triggered this? He thinks that because 
I was friends with my ex-boyfriend. I was being sneaky and going around behind his back right. and hiding stuff from him. Okay, and from that, he has called you the most horrible and despicable names. Slut and pig and racial slurs and... Uh, everything you I mean some of these I can't even say on the air they're they're so bad and despicable he says those things to you regularly right yes and what do you do when he does that um I don't know I I kind of just learned to I, I got used to it whenever he does say it I don't do anything I kind of just brush it off he says you're worn out and sloppy yeah how old are you 20 20 He's, he makes fun of your body. Yeah. He says your body's disgusting. Yes. Okay. Well, Matt does not back down from his opinion. He is adamant that she is sleeping with another man. Take a look at this. I'm almost 100% sure that Elena cheated on me with two different people, one being her ex-boyfriend and one being one of my friends. I never caught her in the egg. And she says, until you catch me with somebody, I'm innocent. I don't believe that. When I accuse Eileen of cheating, she cries and screams and it's almost like she's trying to hide something. It makes me sick to think that my son could be in the same house as someone she's cheating on me with. Eileen is seven and a half months pregnant and the doctor told her that she got pregnant in the month of July and we were together all of August or July. I'm 100% sure that this is not my child. I've called Eileen names, I've called her nasty, disgusting, whore. If Eileen is seven months pregnant, sleeping with somebody else, then she deserves to be called a whore. She's getting the emotional support from me and the intimate part from somebody else. I believe this has been going on during the entire pregnancy. In the last year, we've broken up five or six times. Any time that I give Eileen a chance to work it out with me, it only lasts for three to four days. I can't get past the fact that she may have cheated on me and that she's hiding it from me. Until Eileen tells me she's cheated on me, there's no way of us ever getting back together. You, you gotta tell him this stuff though. Okay, what is it you're saying to her now? You're telling her that she, you admitted to, she admitted to you in the car that she cheated on you, right? Yeah, like I, I've learned that I have to, like, I started noticing signs in our relationship, like not, things that didn't bother the way they used to. Um, and nothing was a big deal. Like she, it's like she didn't care as much. And she started making some little messages towards like her ex-boyfriend. She was trying to be friends with the people that he'd hang out with. She kept trying to find things out about him. In order to get the truth about anything, I had to question her and question her and question her. Well, let's go back to that. Because you said she admitted to you in the car yeah. that, yes, that, she that, had cheated a, on you. Yeah, I, so let's talk about that because you said she did admit this and you, and you asked her when we came out here why she didn't tell me that because I asked her if she had cheated on you yeah, and she says makes, absolutely not. Makes me sound like an idiot. Let's fast forward to the car. I, so she admitted to you in the car that she cheated she on said, you. And that's true, right? You admitted this to yeah, him in the this car, is, right? This is the first time. Hold on. This is the first time that he ever accused me. It was uh -huh. 2013 in November. Um, we were in the car. Literally, we were talking for five hours, and he was like, Eileen, just tell me you cheated on me. If you don't tell me, I'm going to walk away. You're, you're going to have to raise this baby alone. He literally said that the only way we can talk and get over things is if I told him. So after being questioned for five hours, I told him, yes, I cheated on you. Was that the truth? No, it was not the truth. Why would you tell him that? Because he said he was going to leave, and I was pregnant, and he said that's the only way we could even continue to talk is if I told him that. Uh huh. So you told him what he wanted to hear. Yes. Okay. And then what happened? After that, he looked at me and he was like, how could you? And I was like, I, I don't know what to do. So he grabbed my phone, he walked out and he smashed my phone. And I was like, Matt, I didn't cheat on you. Why do you want to hear that I cheated on you when I didn't? Literally, I said, he, we can't, he would, I said we can't get help unless you tell the truth. I was like, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to think it's disgusting. Like, I said, you, please tell because me. Because every said. time I Did you wind up I, sleeping on the floor? Yes. He made me sleep on the ground that night. She had the option to leave this. She had her keys in her car. She wanted to stay. She Why did you leave. sleep on the floor? I didn't want to sleep in bed with her after I thought she cheated on me. Couldn't okay, let's take on. a break. Eileen says Matt will do anything to hurt her, going so far as to send her audio of himself having sex with another woman. We'll talk about that after the break.
One time, Matt sent me an audio recording of him having sex with another girl. I was just kind of like, what is this? And Matt responded to it. She's given me everything I never got. Right when you're the one that... One time, Matthew and I were on the way to the park. Matt and I stopped at someone's porch and started having sex. I had a whole bottle of vodka. She lost her clothes and passed out. He was trying to get me home by picking me up and dragging me. I kept dropping her on the way. I was covered in bruises and scrapes. Someone called the police. When the police showed up, it looked like me and this other person were kidnapping her. They arrested me on the spot. I was taken to the hospital. I was convicted of a simple assault. He says that if he wasn't with me that night, that he would have never found himself in that situation. Well, Eileen has a one-year-old child and another on the way with her boyfriend of nearly two years, Matt. Now, Eileen says that Matt is so controlling, jealous, and spiteful that he has accused her of sleeping with his friend, accused her of having another man's bodily fluids on her pants, and sent her an audio of him having sex with another woman. Matt, he doesn't just think that I cheat on him. He thinks he knows when I did it, who I did it with, how I look doing it. He thinks that I cheated on him, so he wants to get back at me. One time, Matt sent me an audio recording of him having sex with another girl. I played it and I was kind of in shock. I was just kind of like, what is this? And Matt responded to it. She's given me everything I never got. I couldn't help but replay it over and over again just to see if that was real. I will never get that out of my head. <sighs> Cheating's one thing, but to send someone a video and to hurt them, I don't know if you can fix that. Um, did that hurt to hear that? Yeah. What did you think when you listened to it? So he did it to hurt me. He, like, wanted to hurt me. Mm -hmm. And that's what hurts more. Did it have the desired effect? I mean, you wanted to hurt her and it did, right? <laughs> if you believe all of this, if you believe that she's involved with her ex-boyfriend, if you believe that she's having another man's baby, why are you still here? I'm just addicted to fighting. It's like... Why aren't you gone? I have an addictive personality. Like, with my OCD and stuff, I just kind of became addicted to the fighting and the, the how I get when we fight, controlling, and it's not even about her anymore. It's just about that. Did you spit on her? I have, yes. Did, did you ask her to take a polygraph to prove that she hadn't cheated? Yeah. Did she? She did. And you drove to another town to take it? In Pittsburgh, yeah. Yeah, and you paid like a fee and, and she took the polygraph? And what were the results? She wasn't lying. She, she passed. Okay, but then didn't you accuse her of, of having sex with the operator to give her a passing grade? No, no, no. You, I didn't you, say you had sex with her. Come on. You said that. I never said you had either, sex with him. You said I either convinced him or. I think she I made him feel bad. She wasn't going to leave. She wasn't going to leave. You wouldn't going to leave in Pittsburgh. I, 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 I drove down. So you drive to Pittsburgh, get a polygraph operator, take a polygraph exam, she passes, and then you say, well, that doesn't count because you did something to convince him to falsify the record and give you a, a pass on it. I mean, there's, there's more to it, but ultimately, yeah. What is it? Did you either question the result or you didn't? Yeah, I, I definitely did, yes. Really, she's the polygraph operator? I tried. <laughs> Man, I, I'm, it took me a lot to even walk out of it. I mean, I know a lot of the stuff sounds crazy. Like I'm, when I, I don't just make things up. Like I really do believe these things, and like, it, it sucks. Well, I, I know you, you believe it, but I'm, as you look at it in the cold light of day, under the bright oh, lights yeah, yeah, here, yeah. I mean, does it does it look like that might be a little bit of a stretch? It, it, it does, and, th and those are days whenever I like, I'll be like, listen, like, I, I don't think you've done anything, and I'll, I'll be nice to her. And then once my head, once I start 
looking at anything as again, or if something happens, like it just is right back to square one. Okay, and, and, and you thought it was, you, you thought she's had a, a an, she's, she's been involved with her ex. You thought it's been some random person. No, nah, not, not, not anyone random, just my ex, her ex, and then one of my friends. Well, no, you've He's said disgusting. then maybe just some random person. No, I didn't say that. Wait, you think I sleep with half the town? Like you've but it, it was always that one person. And I know, but you've friend. said that. That's that just, that just me being pissed. Like what? Just, when I said half the town, like that just me being. Well, that's kind of random. It, it, it is. My, when I when I get mad, I say things that I shouldn't say. I have no filter. Well, but then and you I'd can't like say you didn't say them later. Yeah, you're right. I know. <laughs> Wait for this. Well, no, I'm just trying to find the bottom here. No, and I, and I appreciate that. I, you're the only person that can help me. I, that's why I wanted to come on here. Let me tell you, this this has got to stop, or trust me, you're going to wind up in jail, and you're going to wind up losing your children here. You you can't do this kind of erratic behavior and be around your children. And you can't continue to subject yourself to this because rational people are going to step in and say, this is America. I guess you have the right to subject yourself to whatever behavior you want to subject yourself to. But you now have a fiduciary duty to children. And if, and if you're subjecting yourself to abusive behavior and putting your children in harm's way, you may not stand up for yourself, but if you don't stand up for your children, they'll find someone who does. I, I just I just want to say, whenever she made the comment that I've looked at my son and said that his mom's a whore, I've never, and that's one of my fears is that she has somewhere around. But he's everything to me. I never had a dad growing up, and I, I make well, sure. Well, the I one I'm son. concerned being around the children is you. If I ever raise my voice in front of him, I always used to yell at you for that because I didn't want to hear the screaming. I, I, would, I would do the questioning, and I would, you know, say yeah. things. You have, have you said to your son, I know, honey, your mommy's a whore? I, I've never looked at my son and said Matt, that. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. I said it to you. I, I said that to you. I said that to your mom, too. Eileen isn't the only person who says Matt's behavior is out of control and pushing Eileen away. You won't believe who's taking Eileen's side when we come back. Matt is very verbally abusive towards Eileen. I do call him out on it. As a mom, it hurts when I see you say the horrible things to her. That's She's the mother of your child. Hard. You shouldn't it's talk to her hard. like that. Growing up, my dad never kept his word. And he always put anyone and everybody in front of me. And it made it hard to trust people. Yeah, I just feel like everyone that I love leaves because I'm not good enough. From belittling her appearance to making her send pictures to prove where she is and accusing her of having another man's bodily fluids on her pants, Eileen says her boyfriend Matt's behavior is out of control. But Eileen isn't the only one who thinks Matt is just really out of order here. His mother does too. You did the lie detector test and that proved that she didn't cheat on you. Why can't you believe that? I really started seeing the trust issues with Matt when he started dating Eileen. If I am right on the dates, there really is no way she has got pregnant with my kid. There's absolutely no way. I believe this child is his. I can't just say, yes, she cheated on you because you feel that she cheated on you. I need proof. I can't imagine Eileen ever cheating on him. Matt is very verbally abusive towards Eileen. I do call him out on it. As a mom, it hurts when I see you say the horrible things to her. That's She's the mother of your child. Hard. You shouldn't it's talk to her hard. like that. Matthew thinks that I cover for her. The trust issues Matt has from his past are real. The ones he has with Eileen are imagined. Until he gets help, nothing's going to change. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you're here. You're here because you want to see your son get some help, right? Yes. What do you want for him? <sighs> I just want to see him in the ball game. <laughs> Feel better about himself. He doesn't trust anybody. 
he lets very few people in. And I just want him to love himself up enough to know that other people do love him, but he can't trust people just because a select few people let him down. Like, I love him, and I'm not taking her side. I just, I am not in agreement with how he talks to her, and if they're not going to get along, and they're going to fight like they do, and he's going to say the horrible things to her that he says, they should just end it and... Okay, but this is not, this is not just about Eileen, right? No. And you recognize that too, correct? You, you don't just have these suspicions and distrust about her. That's, no. Right? No. Like you have suspicions and distrust about people at work, about your job, right? And about other folks, true. It's true. It's like everybody's against him. And why, why do you think that is? What do you think's going on? I just say I used to always think the worst in everybody. And when, when I think those things, I mean, in my life it's been, it's really been what's going on. I got to always think the worst in my dad. And I would think, like, oh, no one could do that to somebody, but it would come out that he would be doing that. I kind of just carried that to everybody else. I just feel like if someone that close to me did that to me, then why, why wouldn't someone I've known for a year and have to do that to me? Why do you not trust your dad? Uh, he's... He just, I mean, he, he and his wife just split after um, he pretty much took her family and took care of her kids and forever, I mean, my brother. We finally had him for like a month or two and he met some other, a mother lady and within the two weeks she was more important than us. Someone he's known for two weeks was all of a sudden greater than us and we weren't good enough anymore and I haven't talked to him in three months. In the last seven, eight years, I can't even tell you one thing that we've done like on, on his time, like, like willingly. I just feel if I'm lucky enough for him, then. I mean. So you've loved your dad and looked up to him, and he lets you down. Yeah. And every time you give him another chance, and you think, okay, this time, then he lets you down again. And how many times has he said he's going to show up and do something? Made a promise. My whole life. And not kept it. My whole life. Do you think that might cause you to see the world as a hurtful place? I don't think so. I think a lot has to do with him. Do you think that might cause you to say, you can't trust your own father, you can't trust anybody? Yeah. Do you think that might cause you at some level to say, what's wrong with me? I yeah, mean, if I yeah. was a better son, I would inspire more love from my dad. If I was a better person, then people would love me. Obviously, I'm not, so why could I expect anybody else to want me? I mean, is it just possible that that voice starts going in your head saying, nobody is going to be loyal to you. Nobody's going to be truthful to you. Nobody's going to be there for you. Yeah, I mean, why so. would they? I mean, I mean, seriously, if your own dad doesn't want you, what, uh, what? Your, your own dad's supposed to love you, and if your dad doesn't, then why would anybody else, right? That's how I feel. He calls you despicable names. He threatens you, he intimidates you. He does everything he can to try to drive you away. You said you get a high when you fight. Yeah. You ever wonder why? Somehow, some way, you wind up with a, a, a beautiful, intelligent young woman that for some reason winds up in love with you, wants to have your children, wants to share your life, you have to assume she's going to leave you, right? I mean, how could she not? I mean, isn't that the voice in your head? I mean, how could she not? Yeah. 
He's actually said that. You know, Matt, Eileen accuses you uh, of being controlling and jealous. And here are some of the things she says you've done in the past. She's made you send pics to prove where and who she's with. You thought white stain on her pants was another man's bodily fluid, accused Eileen of sleeping with a polygraph examiner or doing something with him to pass the test, sent her audio of having sex with another woman to get back at her, saw a Nike sock on a bed in a photo and thought it belonged to another guy, threatened to take their son and leave her homeless, made her tell the family not to speak Spanish because they thought they were always talking about you, accused Eileen of sneaking out and cheating with a best friend during the nights, threatened to leave and never speak to her if she took a job that your uncle offered. But, you know, you, you say all of this stuff, and I'm going to tell you, all of this is a test. All of this is a test. This is a constant push, push, push on her of a test. About, about half of that's true, though. I mean, yeah, half uh, of it's uh, true. Uh, yes. You know, you can say half of it's true. She says half of it's true. Right. I, I don't, I'm not worried about words. I'm worried about the fact that you constantly test her and push her yeah, to I see do. if she will leave you. I, I do. And I'll tell I, you what all of that adds up to to me is this. Yeah. It all adds up to one thing, I fear you will leave me. Is that not what it's all about? I mean, if you're going to be honest, if you're going to just man up and be honest, is that not what all that adds up to? I think so, yeah. You said you get a high when you fight. Didn't you? Yeah. Do you ever wonder why? Just the, the feeling that I could do whatever I want and she won't leave. Like I'm so used to people leaving, even when I treat them good. That it kind of, kind of feels good that you know, she'd stay with me no matter what. I just kind of got used to... You, you, you are so right. It, 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 is, it is so a test. You're, you're being tested every time. He's seeing if he can push you away. He calls you despicable names. He says things to you. He threatens you. He intimidates you. He does everything he can to try to drive you away, to test you. And every time that you hang in there, for just that few minutes, you get that sense of relief for just that few minutes, right? Yeah. But then it immediately starts to build again, doesn't it? It's kind of like a drug. It's kind of like a drug That's addict. That's exactly what it is, you, yeah. you get a high. You just build, build, push her, push her, push her, push her, push her. And then she passes a test. <sighs> and you get that sense of relief for just a second. She didn't leave me. Can I, can I clarify like just a few of those things on the screen? No, because yeah. I don't care. I, but it's just, it just I, doesn't matter. That, wait, don't get OCD with it. me. It doesn't matter. No, no, it no, doesn't just, matter. Do you really think it matters? Yeah, the people that watch it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Take a break. When you're living in a situation like the one Eileen is, people often feel like they're the only one and that there's no way out. Well, you're not the only one. There is a way out. And I'm going to talk to this couple about what needs to happen here to change this. We'll be right back. My boyfriend, Matt, wants to break my family up because he thought I was lying to him. He thinks that I'm not a good mom. He said I belonged on the streets, and I was gonna be homeless, and that he was gonna take my son from me. Oh my God. 20 year old Eileen says that her relationship with Matt is being destroyed by his controlling and jealous ways. They have a one year old son together and another one on the way. But she's terrified to leave him for good because he threatens to take their son and leave her homeless. Robin, I, I want to ask you to weigh in on this really quick. 
Matt, she's my wife. She's also one of the leading domestic violence advocates in America. She has a foundation, When Georgia Smiled, and which is devoted to the prevention of domestic violence. And she has something called the Aspire Initiative, uh, which is an interactive curriculum to help tweens, teens, and adults uh, learn about and deal with domestic violence. And it's used in schools all over the country. It's been recognized uh, for Congress, United Nations. This is used everywhere. And one of your points is it's not just physical violence, right? That's right. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, domestic violence is if someone hits, kicks, punches you. And what we're seeing here today is verbal and mental abuse. And it, it really, like you saw before the show, when you even had to whisper in my ear some of the horrible things, Eileen, that he is saying to you, that's verbal abuse. You are in an abusive relationship. And, you know, I, I've been sitting here during the show, and my instinct as a woman is to just run up there and grab you and just take you out of here as fast as I can, just run out the back door and just hide you and keep you from him. Of course, I can't do that. Um, I want to. Uh, but what we're here to do today is to educate you and to tell you that you are being abused. You do not have to be talked to this way and treated this way. You can demand that he treat you with dignity and respect. You can demand that he treat you in an honorable way. And you can demand of yourself that you will not accept that of him. You have the right to tell him, you will treat me with respect. You will honor me. And you can make that demand of yourself. You can tell him, I am going to honor myself. I am going to treat myself with, with respect. I am going to treat myself with dignity. And I am going, going to give myself the right to walk away. But what do you think about what she's saying? It's ridiculous. I, I break up with her all the time. And I've, I've, nev I've, never, I've never told her that I'm going to take, take the kid. What, what was uh, it that my wife just said? That was ridiculous. No, 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 no. I, I thought she meant with her. No, your your wife is. She's always spot on. I thought. No, I thought. I thought she meant with her. I'm okay. still stuck on what came up on the screen. No, just, okay, uh, listen. I, I'm, I'm still stuck on the screen. I okay, just, let me stuck. tell you why I'm not going to enter your OCD loop here uh -huh. about what's stuck on the screen. Okay. I, I I'm not going to go play this game with you and argue the ridiculousness of the wording on the screen. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Are you abusive with, are, are you abusive with Eileen? Yeah, Ver verbally I, I say very hurtful things to her. Okay. Yeah. Are you abusive with Eileen? Yes. Do you threaten her? Can you elaborate on that? I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> as in my like. Do I look like I want to play semantics with you? No, no, you don't. Just... Are you, do, do you, do you try to manage her by intimidation? Yes, I do. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about when I say threaten her. So you, you verbally abuse her, you derogate her, you erode her self-esteem, do you not? Now, yeah. you and I both know what's in these text messages that are too disgusting oh, yeah. to read. No, I, I know and what I, I say I'm happy to read ridiculous. them. If you, if you want me to read them for all these people, you I, want to talk about the wording on this screen? You want to go over some of the other wording? No, I, no, I, I don't think I you do. I completely agree with you. I just don't want people to think that she's stuck in this relationship. Like I, I've broken up there many times, and she's You don't need to worry about back. what people think. You need to yeah, worry no. about what you I don't, think. I don't trap her in this relationship. That's, that's all I want to get across. Okay, you got that across. You don't trap her in this relationship. Yeah. Everybody got that? <laughs> Everybody got that? He does not trap her in this relationship. I think you are damaged. And I think it's time that somebody tried to heal the hurt instead of judge the angry language. So here's the deal. My point is, I don't think you're a bad guy at all. I think you are damaged. And I think it's time that somebody look past all of your bravado and all of your bad acts and language and tried to heal the hurt 
instead of judge the angry language. So. And that's what I want to do. Even if you're right, if everything you believe is true, if everything you think she's done is true, even if you're right, you're totally wrong. If she has cheated on you, your behavior is totally wrong. If she has cheated on you, the thing for you to do is to either work through that or choose to move on. But what you're doing is at the expense of your character and your integrity. Did they tell you about the, the baby, the conception date and all that? I mean, that's what makes me, that's like the main, like I know if I had no proof, I'd, I mean, even, even if I thought enough that I had proof, I should, I should have left a long time ago, but Matt, the main thing is the, the Matt, baby thing. Stop talking. Hi. <laughs> Sir. Stop talking. That baby is yours. Okay. And I could prove that to you with a paternity test, but then I would be entering your delusional system, and I won't do that. All right. See this guy right here? This is Miles uh, Adcox right here. Uh, he's CEO of an organization called OnSight. And um, OnSight is, he, he is, they're just a leader um, in trauma treatment. And these guys have uh, a, a beautiful ranch just, side, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. It's a chance for you to be selfish with yourself and really get your ducks in a row and come out with a fresh and new perspective. And uh, so I asked Miles to be here today to sit down with you after the show and just talk to you about all of this. And, and I, I want you to sit down because Miles, I think you guys could have a wonderful exchange with him. Do you agree with that? I totally agree. I mean, exactly. You're, and Dr. Phil is, is spot on. You're trying to, and this is, unfortunately, it's a familiar mess that we see a lot, but you're trying to, to live and love and parent standing in the middle of emotional quicksand. And Dr. Phil's throwing you a rope here, and if he's going to hand me the other side, I'll pull you to safety, but changing the outcome for your kids and, and for this family here starts with you. So we Thank can you. help you get there. Thank you. And I'll let you guys sit down and, and talk back there, but this is a beautiful place, and I mean that both physically and with the team there that will really work with you, and this, this can change for you in a very short period of time. I think you'll be absolutely amazed. Uh, we're going to talk more about what needs to happen with this family and with this baby on the way when we come back.
I believe that my husband has had thousands of women. A wife's wild exaggerations? You say you've had two physical affairs. Yes, I'm disgusted with myself. Sorry, that doesn't come across. Or a husband's decade of deceit. It's not easy making love to somebody that doesn't get that. You created the problem so you can get off your self-righteous high horse. I'm saying what you should be saying. Let's do it. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. I'm going to get you the help that you need. Five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. This is a bizarre story, so complicated and convoluted that no one will even believe the extent of it. Believe it or not, that's the first line of an email sent to me by a desperate wife. Last year, Deb discovered that her husband, David, has been hiding a tangled web of lies and sexual secrets for over a decade. She now believes that he has cheated on her at least a thousand times. Take a look. I believe that David, my husband, has had sex with literally thousands of women. I looked at our phone bill and was quite shocked to see 300 texts a day between him and other women. I decided to take the numbers and call these women. The women told me that he had confessed that he loved them. I found numerous pictures and videos passing between him and women of a sexual nature. He was looking through the Craigslist ad for people to hook up with locally. When I asked him, he denied it, and he blamed it all on hacking. He was using Google Translator for private sex chats with women from other countries. How could I possibly ever compete with that? The women of the world and the fantasy sex. I found hookup sites, single sites, cheating sites. Several conversations were reminiscing how good the sex was. I found conversations where they were actually having sex over the computer. This one in particular really affected me. We're gonna have to cool it for a while until this blows over if it does. Every time I bring it up, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I said it. Why aren't you happy now? To me, that's not an apology. I asked him if ever in 10 years of cheating and lying to me, if he ever thought once how that would make me feel, he just said no. But all of that was just the tip of the iceberg <laughs> compared to what Deb says she discovered on a secret flash drive that David kept on him at all times. One morning, David couldn't find his flash drive, got frantic and red in the face and was sweating. So he left for work. I went looking, found it. I plugged it into the computer and was shocked to see what I saw. A huge file, huger than huge. And it contained photos, videos, social contacts, email addresses, computer manipulations. They were encrypted. I knew exactly what the files were. He had been saving, collecting, modifying, adding to this huge file since 1996. And there he was in 2014 carrying it in his pocket. Well, David admits he hasn't been faithful but says Deb is exaggerating the truth and refuses to just move on and, well, just get over it. The cheating started seven years ago when I was introduced to Facebook. I found it to be an immense world out there. I would get friend requests from women that I didn't even know. In my mind, I saw absolutely nothing wrong with friending them, so I did. Women would say things to me that any guy would want to hear. You're good looking, your eyes are nice, wow, nice body, do you work out? And then there would be a lot of sexting. The conversations, they'd get pretty heated. I would send pictures to them via text message. Kind of like the Brett Favre representative Wiener photographs. I was telling myself in my mind, this was keeping us from arguing in some ways, it actually made my marriage better. I probably talked to 15 women on a daily basis. I did have two physical relationships, two different women at the same time for nine to 10 months. Part of what made all this easy is that my wife had 100% trust in me. So 
but would make her think I was lying. I came home one day and one of the text messages actually saved to the computer. I tried to lie my way out of it. I found out that my wife was a lot smarter than I thought. I actually believed that if you deleted something from the computer, it was gone. Silly me. Since the time she found out, I stopped cold turkey. I have deleted everything. She tends to not believe a word I'm saying right now. There are times when I think to myself, okay, it's been a year, let's move on. I'm not cheating on my wife right now. You said he's cheated with thousands of women. I believe that. And what do you think about all this that she's found out here? <sighs> I'm disgusted with myself. No, I mean, I... I, I, I don't... <laughs> sorry. I, I don't... That doesn't come across. In anything I've read, anything you've said, anything you're saying now. Let's, let's be sure you know at least what he's told us. Uh -huh. He says he's only been cheating on you for seven years, not 11 years. So calm down, I guess, is the point. But it's seven years versus... Do you really think that's a material difference in the grand scheme of things here? No. Okay. You say you've had two physical affairs, both in 09, with coworkers. Yes. Okay, so out of all of these women, all of these hookups, many of them local, we'll talk about that in a minute, you're saying you've only had physical connection with two of them. Yes. And he said he had sex with them five or ten times apiece. Did, did you know that? Did you know the detail? No, I knew none of the... You take a day details. off from work and go to a hotel and... Right. And... Connect, right? Did No, I did not know that. Okay. You say you talked to a couple of dozen women on a daily basis. Yeah, and they were generally the same within that whole time period. Okay. I didn't just add women every day. Well, she said you've had sex affairs with thousands, with sexting, online, plus physical, and that you were sending two to three hundred texts per day to <sighs> five or six women. No, that's, that's an extreme... I would probably send maybe 20 or 30 texts a day, probably no more than 50 a day. I can't physically imagine that I was doing hundreds a day. Hmm. Okay. You didn't tell them, some of these women didn't know you were married. No, right? actually all of them knew I was married. You, you Every single one that I talked to was extremely surprised that they weren't the only one. They thought they were exclusively um, having interactions with him. He, he sometimes told them, that you were mentally ill. Yes. What would you send them pictures of carefully? Right. I mean, we're talking intimate pictures here? Yes. You would like Anthony Weiner and... Yes. <laughs> Maybe I misunderstand that, but there's a room full of women here. If you want to get that kind of picture, raise your hand. <laughs> if you say, oh, hell no, raise your hand. I was just curious. You went on Craigslist, and he looked at ads that read, I'll be on the side of the road by the highway at 4 o'clock. I have never been on Craigslist looking for women. I spent the last year constantly tracking him, his computer, his phone, his Internet footprint. So you've seen Craigslist on there? Oh, yes. How did it get on there? We've had multiple people look at our computers. I did not do any of that. Well, we talked to that computer expert, and you're really going to want to hear what he has to say. We'll talk about that when we come back. Let me make one thing clear so you can get off your self-righteous high horse. You created the problem with your behavior. Well, after 11 years of lies and deceit, my guest Deb uncovered a double life that she says her husband David has been hiding. A double life, she says, is filled with intimate and sexual relationships with thousands of women all over the world. But there is one relationship David admitted to in his initial interview with producers that has me wondering if David is walking a very different, very fine line. Now, you're getting upset about that. Why? Because there was not supposed to be any mention of the fact that I'm Why? Who, who'd you make that deal with? I talked with your producers. There's not supposed well, to be. Let me bring him out here. All right, this is yep. Justin Arlock, he's senior producer here uh, at the Dr. Phil show. He's been with me for 13 years. What's the story here? 
never made any deal. The only thing he ever told me that he didn't want to talk about, I'm not going to mention, because you asked me not to talk about it, and Dr. Phil knows because it's in the book. Right. I specifically. No. You're lying. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Who'd you tell that to? To me? Is, is this I who talked to him. I talked to the lady that interviewed me on Saturday, on Sunday. Okay, let's get her out here, too. Uh, Lindy, did you talk to him? I did. Did you make a deal to not talk not about him being a teacher? It wasn't Lindy that interviewed me at the house on Sunday. Uh, we got the rest of them coming. Okay, uh, Nina? Yes. Uh, uh, this is Nina. She's been here forever as well. Did you make a deal with him not to talk about this? No, we didn't make a deal. Did he request a deal? No. Man about being we got published. Nina, Lindy, and Justin here. They think it's funny. They think it's funny. Hey, hang on just a minute. Let me make one thing clear so you can get off your self-righteous high horse. You created the problem with your behavior. She didn't create the problem. He didn't create the problem. She didn't create the problem. She didn't create the problem. I didn't create the problem. You created the problem. I understand that. But don't think that glare you're giving her and this bully attitude that you've got affects me in the least because it does not. I understand Say something. My God, you've been putting up with this for this long. You're sitting here like a bump on a log. I mean, I'm saying what you should be saying. I know that. Well, <clears throat> his apologies up until now have been, all right, all right, I'm sorry. Why aren't you over it yet? This whole time, it's been continually my problem, my fault. If you hadn't have done this, if you hadn't have done that, I wouldn't have had a reason why aren't you over it yet? As if it's no big deal. I'm sorry, but this is all a big deal for me. And it has been for this last year, and it's taken over my life. You have never offered me <clears throat> any truth until I backed you into the corner for months and months and months, and then you would admit this much. But the rest of it, oh, I made it up. I'm being hysterical, obsessed. I want to torture you for the rest of my life. I love the drama. Oh yeah, I, lo I love the last year that we've lived together and what, what it's entailed of. I don't know why anyone would think that doesn't make me proud. That doesn't make me proud at all. Why don't you look at her? I don't think anyone could really understand how disgusted I am about how, what this has actually done to her. I, I am absolutely disgusted what this has done to my wife. And then why do I have this creepy feeling that it's continuing? Why do I still find suspicious things that make me wonder and I'm not allowed to bring it up? I have. I found that new account you swore up and down you didn't have. But yet, there was your name, your birth date, your picture, your preferences, all set up on July 5th, 2013. You told me that was a hacker, and that's an impossibility. You, you're asking me, you're telling me that I'm stupid to believe what you're saying to me when you've continually lied to me over the years, over and over and over <coughs> again, and I'm not supposed to believe what I see on paper that tells me otherwise. I know that you've offered I call this it before. the Twilight Zone theory. I would actually take a polygraph to tell you that since this all came out in February, I have literally stopped cold turkey. The, the paperwork that she came out with that said I did something back in July, even some, something that said I did something the day before my birthday, this is stuff that was happening at 2, 3 in the morning, and you actually believe that I was getting up at two or three o'clock in the morning and doing this stuff. The computer said so. I'm not making any excuses for what I've done, but I am saying right here, national TV, since this came out in February, I've not texted anyone, I've not been on Facebook, I've not IM'd anyone, that I've not, not called true. anyone or emailed anyone. Well, he let's take home. a break and find out if that's true. Next, from hacking David's emails and hiring computer experts to tracking down and calling women David has had sex talks with, Deb says her mission is to uncover the entire truth. And she says, I admit, I have become obsessed with this. It is consuming me. We'll talk about that after the break.
my wife, believes there's stuff that I haven't told her yet. She thinks I still have all these accounts open. I have nothing open. I know he's hiding something. Looking back now, I think that David would bring home women that he was having sex with to meet me. One time he brought home a girl. He said, she's my friend, I'm her mentor. And later I found out that he was having sex with her. I feel like a huge fool. Well, Deb says she thought her marriage was perfect, but one accidental click on her home computer uncovered the world of sex and lies her husband David had been hiding for 11 years. He says, no, 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 it was only seven. Now, Deb says she is consumed with tracking down evidence to prove David is lying and still being unfaithful. Take a look at this and we'll talk. Trying to keep track of David has really taken over my life. I have become obsessed. I have signed up to several dating sites using a different name. Ironically, every single one I went to, I found him on. I made fake profiles so that I could keep track of him. There are multiple pictures and files and videos on his phone with a lock that he says the phone company put that on there. She believes there's stuff that I haven't told her yet. She thinks I still have all these accounts open. I have nothing open. I hired a computer man to come to the house and look at the computer. He confirmed my thoughts. I know he's hiding something. I found another Facebook account with his name, his birth date, his profile, his preferences. She believes that I've actually tried to open Facebook accounts in my name. Now, come on, if I do it, I'm definitely not gonna be stupid enough to do it in my name again. It's extremely frustrating. I'm trying to move forward. I just don't want to be constantly accused and constantly being told everything I've done wrong. I fear that the last 10 years of my life have been a total joke and a lie. Well, we actually have a statement from the computer expert because we've talked to him. And he says, quote, this computer was not hacked. In this case, the public IP address on this client's internet connection is not registered to the customer. Rather, it is registered to the internet provider. So a hacker would have to search every customer that internet provider had to find this client. In essence, knocking on a whole lot of virtual doors before hitting pay dirt. Also, this would leave a footprint, which was not the case here. In that search, it says that you are still communicating with women. From the IT computer expert, July 15th, 2013, said the des desktop PC in question shows a record of multiple occurrences of multiple communications utilizing various forms of social media, such as but not limited to social networks, Facebook, Twitter, Skype, YouTube, Social and MySpace, Windows Live, uh, home group file sharing, which goes on and on and on. So, are they just wrong? Yeah, they're wrong. Now, I want to know... I mean, are they wrong? How do you know they're wrong? Because, because you didn't do I it? I haven't done it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, put me on a polygraph. You are so confident in yourself, you think you can actually pass a lie detector test. I'm telling you, I have not done any of that. You come home on Mother's Day after crashing the old computer, which I was happy to have it out of the house. You come home on Mother's Day several months later. Happy Mother's Day, I bought you a computer. <laughs> Who told you I wanted a computer? <laughs> you bought it for yourself because that very night, you were up all hours of the night according to the event, the event tracking. You set it up, you called the computer me. You put my name as the name of the computer so that you could do your crap on it. What about the other computer tech? He gave us no report, did he? Do you have a report from him? Of I don't have a report for him. He didn't give us a report because like the therapist said, he covered your ass. Dr. Phil, I'm telling you, do a polygraph, do whatever you want to do. I, have, I am not a pathological liar. I am not psychotic. I have not d done any of this since this came out. And this is where the problem comes. I'm not doing it. 
Well, let's take a break. Deb says her husband's affairs are symptoms of selfish and narcissistic personality that has left him unable to perform as a normal husband, that he's not interested in her now. We'll talk about that after the break. I feel like when we do try to have sex together that David's unable to. I think he's desensitized himself to having sex with one woman. When I asked him to give me some emotional intimacy, what I got instead was a sexual request for something so disgusting to me. I felt very disrespected and hurt. I feel like my husband's incapable of intimacy. It's easier to have random sex. David is a narcissist. I believe that's the reason why he seeks out these women. They validate him as a man. What's your response to her opinion? It's not easy making love to somebody that doesn't give you the feelings back. We went through and verified women that live within 70 miles of David. And first off, he used a profile pic of the two of you. Yes. On his profile. And in the first example of local, female, I would never try to harm you. David, thanks. I need good friends, especially beautiful ones. Extremely gorgeous. Got to take a cold shower now. Use my email address between you and I always. A long, cold shower. Hmm, I think I will go back and check out your profile some more before the shower. Write a long email and tell me about yourself. I have more than words to match, a lot more than words. You do realize I'm trusting you, but I do have a lot more than words. Female two, he says, I've actually sat there at times and just looked into your eyes. They can freeze you. It is nice to have beautiful friends. Female three says, you are so beautiful. Thanks, David, I needed that. Miss you. Kisses and hugs, David. Tons of kisses and hugs and much more. Those are the ones that we could show. Because you had a number that were very explicit, correct? You did that, why? Why did you do that? I don't really think... There is no justification I can give. Do you think that you're emotionally crippled in some way? Yeah, if you know, if you actually know a lot about my strained past, yeah. Yeah. So knowing that, which you know about, I know a fair amount about it, you know it all. It's odd to me that it wouldn't occur to you, rather than blaming her for what she's not doing and not giving me, maybe I need to look at myself and ascertain whether or not I'm failing to elicit these things from someone else. I am seeing a counselor right now. I am seeing a therapist right now. How's that working for you? Is it helping? Is it really yes. doing a good job? Yeah. What have you done to show me any effort, any insight, any, any thoughts, any, any feelings? Just get over it, Debbie. You're the problem. Then why are you still here? We're going to find out also why she is petrified to leave her husband. We're right back. It would be very difficult to start over at my age. I feel like I've worked really hard on this relationship and no, I don't want to give up. We have 16 animals that we love and when I think about having to leave them behind, it's just unbearable to me. Now before the break, I asked Deb why she is still here. You want your house and your animals. No, that's not it. Well, even if that is it, why would you not kick his ass to the curb? <laughs> Instead of you leaving, if that's the case. I don't, have an, I don't have the income to keep it up, number one. How old are you? 
58. You know, you know, we're pretty close. And our lives aren't getting longer. They're getting shorter. There's more behind than ahead. And there comes a point where you've got to say, look, I, I, I've got to do what it takes to preserve myself, to be healthy, to be happy. I've said a million times, I would rather be happy alone than sick with somebody else. And you right now are sick with somebody else. Oh, yeah. And he cannot give you what he doesn't have. I can't diagnose him sitting here, whether he's narcissistic, has an antisocial personality, uh, a, a liar, you know, whatever. I mean, you can make up your own decision, but what you know is... He's not showing you any gender remorse. He says, I'm disgusted at what I've done. And that may be the extent of his emotional range, that it's either hedonism, do what makes me feel good in the moment, or be hostile and angry. Because you've been hostile and angry since you got out here. Before you got pissed off about what you didn't want in the show, you've been, you've been hostile and angry since the minute you walked up. You're telling her, get over it. This is inconvenient for me, for you to continue to be wounded by my actions. I don't know what to do to make her understand this will never happen again. I will get whatever help I need. I don't know where to go, and I don't know what to do. This is why. I've watched your show for <clears throat> years, and we were sitting there one day, and I told her, I said, that's the man I want to meet. She said she wrote you that night. Well, let me tell you what the bottom line is that, you, that I think needs to go on your to-do list. You tend to manage people by intimidation. You're a little bit of a jerk in the way you behave towards her. And so no, she's not gonna run and jump in your arms. Look, intimacy involves trust and surrender. And she ain't about to surrender to you because she doesn't trust you. You, I'd start looking for the door. I'd start figuring a way. <clears throat> I would start figuring a way to save myself mentally and emotionally because your self-esteem is on the floor. Your self-worth is on the floor. You deserve better than you're getting. Stand up and command respect. And you can't do that if you don't get some help. And I will get you some help with that. I will get you some very specific help with finding yourself again. <laughs> Next, she spends every day desperately searching online, obsessed with finding a diagnosis for life-threatening diseases and terminal illnesses she knows she doesn't have. We'll meet her after the break. I wake up every day with anxiety about the thought of being ill. I don't discuss this with anyone because I don't want people to think that girl is a lunatic because I'm not. My next guest, Britannia, spends countless hours on the internet obsessively looking up symptoms and diagnosing herself with various illnesses from throat cancer to a brain aneurysm. Now, she's convinced herself that she has had every disorder in the book, including MS, liver disease, and a heart attack, yet has never gone to a doctor for diagnosis. Take a look. I wake up every day with anxiety about the thought of being ill. I don't ever feel like I'm fine. I always feel like there's going to be something wrong with me. I always think to myself, is today your last day? If I'm having symptoms, I'll go on the internet, through my phone, my laptop. I mean, I can spend an hour to two hours looking it up. It's always at my fingertips, so I look it up anytime I have spare time. I've been stopped in traffic and looked through my phone just to get a quick question in. Two weeks ago, I itched my neck and then I felt something. I was definitely sure it was throat cancer. I looked lump on side of neck. The other morning I woke up, these three fingers were all like numb and tingly. I panic, 
I had told my fiance, this is a heart attack, and he's like, I doubt you're gonna have a heart attack. But then I thought, that's symptoms of MS. I also self-diagnosed myself with brain aneurysm, brain cancer, breast cancer, liver and kidney damage, tonsil cancer, gum cancer. Everything that's around this area has probably had cancer in my head at one point or another. I can't tell if it's just the anxiety that's making it worse or if the actual symptoms getting worse. I don't discuss this with anyone because I don't want people to think that girl is a lunatic because I'm not. Well, I have some good news. Okay. You're not a lunatic. Awesome. <laughs> that's you're good not, to know. You're not crazy. You don't have some kind of psychosis. But what do you think when you see all of that on tape? You're kind of watching your life encapsulated. What do you think? It's ridiculous, honestly. I, I can't even believe that I'm actually saying that because I'm not sick. Mm -hmm. But when I'm by myself and stressed out, that's when it seems real. Okay, so do you consider yourself highly suggestible? Absolutely. I can buy into that. If I if anything new comes out, um, and like the flu season is coming around, and if it's worse, and the and I hear on the news all the symptoms, and it's it's really bad this year, then I'm like, oh my god, and I start of being afraid of the symptoms where I think sometimes I actually have the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Here are the things that you've diagnosed yourself with. Uh, brain cancer, throat cancer, oral cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma, kidney failure, liver failure, multiple sclerosis, brain tumor aneurysm, heart attack, ulcer, breast cancer, and gum cancer. <laughs> so if all of that were true, your head would fall off. Yes. <laughs> we'll I know. It sounds right here, so right? silly. And that's what's frustrating because I don't understand why I'm so afraid of unrealistic stuff. But if you really believe it, why not go to a doctor? I just figure if I walk into a doctor's office, it's going to be bad news. All right. Well, Britannia spent a lot of time at the doctor's office when she was younger. And she actually was diagnosed with a chronic illness. Now... Britannia's father, Kyle, had no idea this was just the beginning of her many health issues. Take a look. When Britannia was about seven, she started experiencing pains in her knee. We were going to the doctor for close to a year before they finally were able to diagnose what the actual problem was. I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And at that age, you don't understand the seriousness of illnesses. She was getting so many blood tests and different treatment plans. It was not enjoyable to watch your daughter become a human pincushion. The situation was upsetting because this took much longer than what I was anticipating. I took medication until I was about 16, and then around 22, I started getting pain in my back and my neck. They tested me for a different arthritis that is called ankylosis spondylitis, and they confirmed I had the gene. I now have a new arthritis that will never go away. Well, I wanted some reinforcement. So joining us to talk about people that experience what Britannia has, who fall into the trap of this internet-fueled hypochondria, also called cyberchondria, is our really good friend, Dr. Frida Lewis-Hall. She's the chief medical officer of Pfizer. So please welcome Dr. Frida. Thank you. Thank you. So you've been listening. What do you think's going on here? Well, let me start by saying this puts me in mind of uh, many years ago when I was in medical school, we used to call our syndrome the medical student syndrome. Um, it, literally, we had everything in the book, and I mean the book, because it was pre-internet. Um, and so th it's not unusual, especially for someone like you, Britannia, that's had a childhood history of an illness, mm -hmm. to be really vigilant um, about all the things that are happening with your body. The problem then becomes that you've got this vast internet and all this information right. that reinforces you, and it's never going to tell you the good stuff or the easy to fix stuff <laughs> no, or it's scary stuff. <laughs> don't worry, sweetie, it's nothing stuff, right? So everything is going to be amplified. Now, Britannia's father, Kyle, is here in the audience, and Kyle, what worries you most about what's going on with her? What, what's real? that bothers me and scares me is um, the stress she goes through because she actually, she's freaking out. And so that stress level, I know it can't be healthy for her. Now, is the stress level something that's kind of all the time or do you mean when she starts thinking she's got a disease? It's, well, it's daily that she thinks she has something. So, so, it's, so it's on a daily basis, yeah. So it's yes to both questions. It may not be 24 hours a day, but when yeah. we're on the phone, it takes a good 15, 20 minutes to calm her down. Right. And I know she's been stressed before she calls me. Now, I, I guess one of my questions, though, is whether or not you have a healthcare team 
that can help you sort through this? I know you went to the doctor a lot when you were younger, but how about now? No, no, I don't now. I haven't been to the doctors for about five years, maybe, uh, when I was diagnosed with AS, and I haven't been back since. I, I tried to avoid it at all costs. One of the things that, that can be helpful to you and to other people who are going through this is to make sure that you have a healthcare team that can help you with a baseline. So um, you want to make sure that you have a, a full team, your primary care physician, specialist if you think you need them, a nutritionist, you know, whoever you need. Take everything that you know about you to them. Um, your medical history, all these symptoms that you have, take it all together in a digestible form mm -hmm. and let them give you a baseline. What would also help then is they can put a monitoring plan in place for you. Okay. These symptoms might be related to your ankylosing spondylitis, the lump in your neck, difficulty breathing. Those things are not uncommon mm -hmm. and you can tell us about them when you see us next. These things we might worry about, give us a call if they happen. Okay. These things, if they happen, call us right away. That may help you sort through <laughs> some of the online. things that you, you know, that right. you look at. Yeah, everything I come across online, they say, if you experience this, go to the next urgent care mm -hmm. immediately. And I'm just like, <clears throat> if, I, if that were the case, I'd be there every day, you know? <laughs> so. Up next, I have a few more things to share with Britannia, including what I think is a real reason lying behind her constant need to symptom surf and self-diagnose, and more from Dr. Frieda. We'll be right back. Now, Britannia says she's living in a constant nightmare and wants help managing her addiction, and it kind of is at least obsessive behavior, to searching the internet for illnesses that she really doesn't have. Um, now, look, Dr. Frieda has some things she wants to say in a, in a second, but what I want to say to you is this. I, I'm a real big one that you have to deal with things in the appropriate way. You deal with psychological things psychologically. You deal with medical things medically. You deal with nutritional things nutritionally. Where you start crossing over sometimes is where you can get in trouble. If you are experiencing anxiety, for example, stress and anxiety, and, and, and your father says that you, you get really tense, and you said that's when you are the worst about this. You start stressing about it. Mm -hmm. So you have to start dealing with what's underlying the, the stress and the anxiety. You've got to pick up a skill set, not just an anxiety pill, but a skill set for coping with stress in your day, managing your anxiety going forward and doing some of the things that will lessen that, which will make you much less likely to go into this. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Doc, what do you think here? The idea of using the internet, which can be very enabling to people, it can also be, in your case, very disabling. Disabling, yeah. So there may be some things that you can do just around these internet searches that would help. Okay. So for starters, identify a few really trusted websites that you would start your search with. Um, the CDC site, the Center for Disease Control, mm -hmm. the National Institutes of Health. Get started with those. These are credible sites that you can learn to trust. Set some limits about how much time or how many sites you're actually going to search on. Okay. You want to make sure that you say, I'm only going to do three sites, or I'm only going to do 15 minutes. Then maybe you could enlist someone to help you. You also want to make sure if you want information about medications that you go to the FDA's website or to the manufacturer's website for the most complete information. Okay. And then, of course, last and absolutely not least is you want to make sure that even if you start with the Internet, you don't stop with the Internet, that you make sure that you confirm these or get objective um, help for someone else who knows. So you can start with the internet, but don't stop there. Always, always get help. And of course, um, if you want more information on cyberchondria or you want to uh, get more information on other health topics, um, you can go to gethealthystayhealthy.com. Okay. It's another place for some, some good information. Yeah, and you said something to me earlier that I, I thought was a really, really good idea, and that was to make a list of your symptoms before mm -hmm. you start mm -hmm. the search so you don't add 
to it just based on right, what you Right, that's read. a big problem. And, and what you said is that you do get caught up in that. So you say, I'm going to check for a headache, and they say, well, what if you also have blurred vision? Mm -hmm. And you were thinking, now that I think about it, I think <laughs> yeah. my vision was blurred. So that you totally want to, yes. <laughs> so you want to write down everything that you think you have. That way you don't get sucked into that doom loop okay. of, oh, yes, I have that. Oh, no, and I have that, and I have that, too.